The second reason I came to you later than normal is because today, as you all know, there is big news coming out of Church Militant, so I ended up spending what portion of the day that I wasn't able to commit to researching the Scalfrey inter interviews with Francis. I had to be on the phone with, with uh, lots and lots of different friends and sources close to Church Militant, close to Michael Voris, who has, I'm going to address this right now, resigned as um, chief boss of Church Militant. And he was basically forced out. And I'm glad that I waited till this very hour, 620 CST, to do so because just a little bit before I went live, Michael released uh, a statement, 15 minute statement. I found it very helpful. A lot of times statements are more often than not sort of fem speak where it's it's a whole bunch of canned pre-written pre-arranged sentimentality that oftentimes even contradicts itself um, and and doesn't end up saying anything and takes up 15 minutes of your time all in the name of emotional sincerity. That's the funny part. People will be like, look, I'm going to be emotionally sincere with you. I'm going to tell you everything. Um, and then and then they don't. And then they're just covering their ribs the whole time. And it's covered in platitudes, covered in uh, um, sentimentality, covered in you know, expressing statements like, I'm humbled by this great trophy you're giving me, but which doesn't make any sense. Things like that. Oddities from strange English language bastardized Roman Catholic morals watered down year of our Lord 2023. This is not at all what Michael Voris's message was, 15 minutes. He delivered it in a tweet. It was one of the most sincere, most emotionally authentic things I've ever seen delivered over Catholic airwaves. I was... Sincerely impressed. I noted, I've always noted, it's one of these Salingerian truisms of real life that when things like this happen, the, the, the petty bastards out there are going to be petty and triumphalistic and, and cheer at the demise of a man that they long viewed as their enemy. And you've seen that in the right, center, and the left. That's pretty obvious. Where it gets really Salingerian is in folks that suppose they're being magnanimous. So there are some other folks in Catholic media that, that said more or less the same things I'm going to say here, but it's always hedged with and usually um, prefaced with, here's my relation, my rapport, my uh, relative position vis-a-vis Michael Voris and Church Milton over the last five years. We didn't always get along, or they, they he criticized me, or blah. We don't have to say any of that. It's not necessary. It doesn't hurt when it's in context, but why not just either defend someone or attack someone? Simpliciter, that's what I say. So that's why I, I like to lead with the obvious thing. Wow. Voris Michael's message was impressively sincere. And he said, I mean, 99.5% of just all the right things where I was like, this is someone that's not bastardizing language. I mean, everything you would want to be there was there said, look, the consequences of these demons of mine are real and public. The demons themselves are private. But most people care about the consequences, so I'm going to apologize to them. I'm going to apologize to you, my viewing audience, and I'm going to apologize to the people at Church Militant who are kind of left holding the bag. I know I left them holding the bag. That's perfect. That's perfect to intone that. But then what he said that was even perfecter is he said, look, I founded St. Michael's Media, Church Militant, uh, whatever, decades ago in order to bring souls to heaven. And just because I'm this fallen messenger, please don't fault the message. And by the message, he really meant just keep on 
your path. Jesus, Mary, Joseph, be with us on the way. <laughs> yeah, and then there's this little plug for keep giving your support to Church Militant. I think I think Mike understands that that and, and as a secondary measure, people will be at least maybe they'll continue doing that. And that's fine. They'll be more hesitant to do that than to not fly off the bark of Peter, which was his main plea and utterly sincere. And this is what I like about Michael Vorce and, and you guys all like about Michael Vorce. And I, I have called the man a friend for the better part of a decade. Um, he, you know, he, here's where people lead up front with the relationality. Haven't talked to him so much over the last two years. I think one, one message over the last 20 months or something like that back and forth. And it was friendly. I, I think, um, I think Mike felt the need, totally unrelated to any, anything he's going through right now. I think he felt the need to sort of back off, you know, after, after, you know, the, the, um, the book debacle between uh, my brother and I, and really, really, really between my brother and Sophia Institute Press, uh, which, which he chose to take out on everyone but Sophia Institute Press, um, and, and them at times. So I think that, that's why I haven't, there was never any personal falling out between um, Mike and me. But then, you know, people, people all usually, when, when someone goes through personal scandal, Folks that were fair weather friends want the distance, even if they didn't have the distance, even if they talked to the guy last night. I'm see, I'm kind of uh, that's kind of not how I'm put together. Uh, I'll, I'll sort of rush toward the fire. I don't hedge much, so I, you know, I, I wish we'd been talking over the last two years because I'm not, I'm not self protect. I don't tend to toward self protection that way. Um, so I'm kind of the opposite. A lot of close people are like, oh, I better disown, disown, disown even though they might have talked to their scan newly scandal-ridden friend. I'm talking in general now. Last night or the night before, I, I'm kind of the opposite. I haven't talked to him in a couple of years, but I do consider him a friend still. I never stopped considering him a friend. I, I, I didn't know that this was going on, and I, I've talked to people all day on the phone. But I will just say this. Whether you do or don't choose to continue patronage of um, St. Michael's Media, Church Militant, um, he, man, Voris hit it right on the head. I could tell you in just one thing, this is where rapport and personal firsthand accounts, relationality, et cetera, do matter. The guy is a sincere lover of Jesus and he's, he's got a big heart, which other people, I think Matt Frad said this, I've said it before. Who else has said it? Someone else. You don't see that on screen when he's doing the, you know, Vortex yelling at the screen. The guy's got a very big heart. And, and um, yeah, he, he bleeds too. And yeah, he airs too. And that, I'm, not, I'm not trying to render de minimis the ways that he, he sounds like he aired here. And again, I don't really pull punches. I, 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 think, I, think, I, I think we all know what we're thinking. It's a big time goof. More than that. And he's, he's suffering the consequences now, but he's absolutely right. What, Ma you know, the book of Psalms says the Lord ponders the heart. And somehow in his divine justice, there's a way of pondering the heart. His son, the fighter, Michael Voris, who really starts tearing up at a moment in his 15-minute message. Those are not crock tears. I, I'm, I'm big into physiognomy. I can always tell. Um. It, he's, he's, I think Mike's going to work it out and, and, um, and turn, turn whatever this stuff is that he's talking that's plagued him for 62 years around because he sincerely loves Jesus. I, I will vouch for him on that much. Just pray for him. And not that passive-aggressive, bitchy Catholic will pray for this guy because he's probably going... Pray for him. Pray for him. We've all got sincere issues. Now, some are... Some are bigger than others, right? I mean, three and a half years ago, Abby went to the hospital and had to have the le uh, what left half of her brain basically diswired. And it was like, other people are like relating to me and saying, oh, my, my, you know, my, my kid had a bad flu and had to go get checked into the hospital a couple years back. And, I, well, you know, one thing's bigger than another. That doesn't mean that in proportion, they can't relate to me. 
um, midwits will always say, oh, well, that's a brain surgery. You, how dare you compare your situation to mine? No, I'm trying to be em empathetic. That's what you guys should do. When we say like, look, we all have bad flaws. We've all mortal sinned. That's not to say that they're all the same mortal sin. But, but they aren't the same mortal sin. But mortal is mortal. Pray for a brother on the way. And say, and then pe I know people, I know you guys. I know how people are going to, I know the conversational patterns which create these sinusoids of favorable and disfavorable content in my comm boxes. You create these sinusoids up and down. You're going to say, well, what about Michael Lofton? Didn't you just do a mean video? Yeah, I look, Michael Lofton too. All of us, heaven help us. That's, that's what we need. Pope Francis too, right? I'm more angry at him than any of these guys. He screwed us over more than any of these guys and, and him too. All of us need the sacraments. I, I'm trying not to be cheap here. But just please, yeah, please, just pray for all these guys. My, myself, pray for my family. Pray, uh, I'll pray for your families. Um, pray for Voris. Pray for, pray for Christine Niles, who's a single mom, you know, or who needed that single wage job. Now her parting ways from church militant makes a little more sense to play for all the people at church Milton. They've done good work in the past. Win, lose, or draw from this point into the future. They've done good work in the past. Did you have anything you wanted to say, Steph? No, I just wanted to back what up what you just said and say as Catholics, one of the things we should love most about our faith is the ability to go to confession. What I saw today in Michael Voris's uh, video really was in a, in a way is a public confession and anybody yeah. like spiking the ball in the end zone on his personal failings, you know, it, it's, it's really disgusting. We should be upholding and honoring the beauty of confession, how we can be redeemed through our faults. And if the man really truly is acknowledging his faults, honestly, and truly seeking to reconcile him with Christ, everyone needs to be rejoicing in that and praying for the man's soul. I agree for my part, but now I don't want to get into female virtue signaling. Women are, you know, that's a, that's a, I think a, a beautiful expression of a, a female perspective, but the reality of life is one does have enemies. Yeah. A man that takes stands has enemies and the, the enemies out there that, that Boris has, they're not, they're not all self same enemies of mine, but we had a lot of the same. So, you know, Hey, he spoke harsh against them. They're going to, this, this is also a moment, you know, it, what a lawyer learns to do in the courtroom is, okay, this is a definite loss. They're going to, my enemies are going to be spiking the football. It's really cool if one or two of them are like, have a little change of heart. And they think, maybe I shouldn't spike the football in the end zone now that Boris is down. Um, but most of them will. And, and he knows that. He's a man. I'm a man. Um, Steph expressed, intoned the woman's perspective. And it's, it's not wrong. It's just, you know. Um, c'est la vie. This is this is how you know. I I I consider myself still a friend of of Voris and have reached out individually, and you do too. And you know he's he was really he's a nice man. He was really kind to us when Tim lost his job. I'll never forget. He called us up the day it happened to lend any assistance he could help. He know that Abby just had brain surgery. Yeah. Um. I, I will forever be thankful to him for that yeah. and i will be praying for him ardently the two people i think that called first i think i was still doing an interview with that yeah. uh black maga guy the two people that called me first before i was even off the thing they called and talked to staff <laughs> besides our personal personal friends like um scott and and g were yeah. were uh were pat coffin and michael boris and it's like, we're all at each other's throats. And I'm not saying, say, unite the clans or sing Kumbaya or let's unite around this. No, I mean, this is a horrible thing. I'm just saying, look, it's even, even bad things. When you have someone that's willing to be awake and say, I'm, I need to go to confession and beat this. Good. That's the best thing. Maybe that's, you know, maybe that's what was neat. I mean, more than anything, it's just a personal testimony. I mean, he's, he is a nice man. That's fine for he has enemies, but don't expect all of his friends to leave his side or anything like that. 
That's exactly what I was going to say. I think a lot of people, we won't. they start in with, aren't you friends with this person? Like, yes. Yeah. I'm a friend to this man, even beyond his faults. But let us all acknowledge that he needs to get over these faults and right. rectify himself to Christ. A right. true friend brings you back to Christ and encourages you when you know that you fall away from Christ and say, no, get back on the shining path. Right. Get your soul back on the shining path. True friends do not leave you to the wolves and your own devices when you're struggling. Now, we haven't spoken to Boris in quite some time, but we'd be happy to take that call and, and give him the encouragement that he needs to get back in with Christ if he hasn't already done so. Yeah, sounds like he's, his head's in the right place yeah. on this. But it's really important that you don't kick dogs when they're down. And this last, last PSA, because again, I was just talking to Anthony from Avoiding Babylon about this <laughs> this afternoon. He's one of the many people I spoke to. Um. What did you, you love? One of the few points I really added to our dumper show was um, a king well tends his borders. Yes. So I know where my sovereignty ends. Look, I'm not telling anyone out there that's an, an enemy of Boris that you can't spike the football, but not you might Catholic. spike the football now. Wait, well, I don't even say the not Catholic thing. No, I said not Cap cla I said oh, not classy. Yeah, not classy. I, you can spike the football, but realize your, your faults probably aren't going to be as public or as embarrassing as this one but they're there and um he might have fallen from grace today doesn't mean he's down for good uh there but for the grace of god go you with, with a different fault and so that's the humbling thought that might entice you to think huh and again yes even with regard to Michael Lofton, who recently worked with Church Milton. I think that's a mistake for them to work with him. But yes, even with regard to a guy like that, that it goes around attacking everyone. Um, we're all in this together. 